and consideration. Council insisted that it was important for him to prepare a summary, but that he would also prepare the NPAAs. On December the 4th at 5.42 p.m., I received legal counsel's supposed findings of fact and conclusions of law, which were filled with inaccuracies, distortions, and poorly reasoned legal conclusions. Legal counsel did not even bother to interview me or seek clarification on any matters. The findings of fact and conclusions of law were obviously drafted with the intention of reaching a predetermined result, which was not surprising because the employee who was seeking workers' compensation was perceived to be a political enemy of the governor, allegedly responsible for altering the Calvertonorial platform known as Blueprint 2020. In fact, the chief of staff directly told me that this entire exercise was all about getting this employee fired and that I, in his words, was collateral damage. One example of how counsel bent or ignored the facts to reach the results he wanted is that counsel accused me of approving employees' leave since July of 2011, ignoring the fact that I did not start working for the port until February 2012. Many of the material events, including the accident which gave rise to the request for worker compensation, occurred in September 2011, five months before I joined the port. I did not have personal knowledge about the accident since I was not at the port at the time. I also did not have personal knowledge as to how the port initially responded to the accident. As in many things which happen at the port, especially things which happened before my arrival, I have to rely on information provided to me by other managerial employees and subordinates.